Hello there. Good afternoon to you and thanks for joining us on today's edition of Soccer Rocks uh, right here on this channel. Soccer Rocks is brought to you by the kind courtesy of CheckyGhana.com, the official online sponsors of the Black Stars. Big one razors. So unique, so many reasons to love it. With support from MVP, I'm offering to us one three year and uh, Agape Ventures, your authentic replica jersey warehouse. My name is Baba Tando and this afternoon I'm asking you one simple question. Just get onto Facebook.com uh, forward slash join news on TV and answer this question for me. With the injury situation of Black Stars Captain Asamwajan looking a bit gloomy, what strategy must Coach Avram Grant adopt to make Ghana beat Equatorial Guinea in the semi final on Thursday? With the injury situation of the Black Stars Captain Asamwajan looking gloomy, what strategy must Coach Avram Grant adopt to beat Ghana? <laughs> to make Ghana beat Equatorial Guinea in the semi-final on Thursday. That's the simple question we're asking you on our Facebook platform as well as on, our all social, on all our social media platforms as well. Today I've been joined on the show by a very uh, young, handsome gentleman. I don't, know, I don't know what else, what adjective else he used to describe him, but he looks like he's quiet. But we're going to get to know very soon if he's quiet indeed. His name is Nana Ousu. Nana, good afternoon to you. Afternoon. Are you shy? Not, not really. Not really. Yeah. But you don't like talking. I do talk a lot. You do talk a lot. Yes. Okay, so he's not as quiet as I thought he is. Now, now let's get straight to business. Um, you know, Black Stars captain Asamajan, he got injured on Saturday. Uh, was it sa Sunday in a game against the Guinea uh, when he crashed with uh, Yatara? That's the goalkeeper of Guinea. Uh, in a, he actually landed awkwardly and uh, was suspecting a groin injury, but uh, we cannot really ascertain that as results of the MRI scan are yet to be made uh, public. All right, so um, we're finding out. What strategy must Coach Avram Grant use? Well, thanks, thanks for having me on the show. But um, with regard to Asamoah case, I, would, I think it will be prudent if um, Coach Avram Grant would psych his voice up and tell them, with or without Asamoah we have the materials to beat Equatorial Guinea. The, my only fear has to do with um, we've started getting ourselves indulged in the fact that the Equatorial Guineans are the host. And then, one way or the other, the referees are going to cheat for them. It doesn't augur well. It's a matter of getting the boys together, psyching them up, with or without Jan. If the referee is on our behalf or not, it's a matter of we psyching ourselves together, putting our art together, and making sure, and making sure we go past Equatorial Guinea, which is very, very possible, considering the amount of experience and material in our back. We're going to talk about officiating in a bit, but uh, if John is out, then it means that our starting 11 is not complete. We need one more person to, 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 to add up, to replace him. And so looking at the 22 other players who are there, who do you think should start ahead of John? No brainer. It's, it's supposed to be Jordan Ayu. He's got experience. Even though he isn't too prolific, he's been lethargic in the tournament. Does that mean that Chrissy Apia should also start? Yes, it means Jordan will start alongside Chrissy Apia. But then uh, if they are starting together, it's a matter of the coach being able to define their car car um, categorical rules for them because if Jordan and Kusiapi are playing, who is going to be the agent striker? Who is going to be the worker? Then if, if they get to know their rules, I think they will gel well. Kusiapi is a typical goal pusher, even though we haven't seen much of him, but it looks like he has eyes for goals. He loves to be in the 18 yard box. But then Jordan is also able to create chances, even though he might not be as prolific as his elder brother and Asamoajan themselves. But I think Jordan and Kusiapi looks very likely. So, uh, uh, um, a partnership between Jordan and Kusiapia, I think, will work perfect. But we haven't seen them like that before. Yes, that is why it's a tournament. That is why um, you go into the tournament with 23 players. It, it, it tells that when one or two players are off, we have other people who are ready to step in or stand in. Mm -hmm. Even though there's Mahatma Otu, which, of course, the local league fans will want to see him play, he hasn't really had much of a time with the Blasters. And Jordan has been there. He's got the experience. He scored a hat-trick against Korea prior to the World Cup. It isn't that he's the worst performer for Ghana. In our, in our game against um, Senegal, he, 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 he gave a good pass to Christian Achu, who squandered it. Even though he might not be as prolific, for him it's, a, it's constant that he will start. And then many coaches will tell you that you don't change a winning team. Kusi Apia got his full debut for Ghana. He scored. And then won the official man of the match. So it tells you... If, Jordan is going to start along someone, alongside someone. It's supposed to be Kwesi Apia. You can't look behind, beside him. If you're looking beyond Kwesi Apia, then you might want to think of Ak Akam or Mahatma Otu. None of them have goal or goals for the blaster. So obviously the two are... I was just about asking you that, that. What do you think about Akam and, the, and the, 
There's Frankie Champon, there's David Akam, there's Mahatma Otu. I, I was a bit disappointed not to see um, Akam, yeah, Akam getting play time in our game against um, Guinea. Because Why? right right from the onset, after the 60th, 70th minute, you realized it was, it was a shoe win. We had won the match. There was no way the Guineans were going to come back. They, they lost it psychologically. Everything, they had lost it. So I was thinking maybe it was time he would bring in somebody like David Akam to try his limbs or someone. He, he brought in Frankie Champon. And Frankie Champon completed about four take-ons within the little period he came. He completed four take-ons. And that is impressive. For someone who comes to play about 10 to 15 minutes, it tells you there are boys who would be able to step in for the big boys. So I was thinking... David Akam would have come in a bit earlier for Asamoah Jan. For, for who knows, if, he had, if it had been so, Jan might not have suffered That's the injury. Easy, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nambe Patrick says, Grant should bench Jordan Ayu. I wish <laughs> Jan all the best. Um, <laughs> but already we, are, we have a striker's deficit because something Asamoah Jan is injured and you're already calling for Jordan to be benched. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. Be, among Jordan... Jordan, are you Mahatma Otu, David Akam, Frankie Champon? I mean, who stands tallest? Jordan. Jordan, that stands tallest. Okay, so, number Patrick, um, I beg to differ. Ahmed Toure, the coach should bench John Boy as simple as that. Wow. What's wow. the problem with people in John Boy these days? Well, I think it's, it has to do with stereotype. When people form stereotypes about you, it takes a while before they're able to erase it or erode all of them. So I think it's a matter of people still haven't learned to appreciate John Boy. They still have... Um, the of course, he was bit. kissing the dollars. Exactly. That thing still lingers on the mind of many Ghanaians, and they just don't want to forgive him. In our game against South Africa, he did very well. In our, in our last game, too, he was brilliant. He, did, he barely put a wrong foot forward. So it, it's a matter of he's trying to redeem his image. It's a matter of we giving him the chance. We give him benefit of the doubt. Everybody makes a mistake, and hey, every worker somewhere... The, the government workers. So but do you yes. think that if uh, Daniel Amate was in the best of um, health conditions, he would, he would have been on the bench? Well, I think John Boy didn't do too bad against South Africa. So mm -hmm. if, even if I was a coach, if Amate was rec um, recovering from an injury, he's been one of Ghana's best players at the tournament. He won the Fair Play Award in our first game, won the Fair Play Award in our second game. And then he plays for Copenhagen week in, week out in Europe. So if, even if Amate... As a starter in my team, and enjoy boy putting a good a good shift against um, South Africa. Mm. I wouldn't want to make John Boy seem he's irrelevant to my course, and then straight away start Amate. It would demoralize John Boy. So it was good he started John Boy, but then against um, it was good he started John Boy against Guinea. But against Equatorial Guinea, the onus lies on the coach to just oppose the two players and see who really fits into the contest of we playing Guinea and then we beating Equatorial Guinea. In okay. Gilbert Macquarie says Jordan and Kwesiapia will work as well. Okay. Badabo, uh, Badago Albert Menza says Akam and Kwesiapia should start so that you're not in favor of Jordan. All right. Um, Newton Jaffet says replace him with Kwesiapia and Jordan. Uh, Cornelius Bodhi says Kwesiapia should replace him because he can do better as well. Sewanu so, Eric says Jordan will be the best choice. Okay. Um, let me. Take a quick breather. I'll come back and then we focus on officiating. Stay tuned. Soccer Rocks will be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Soccer Rocks is brought to you by the kind courtesy of CheckyGhana.com, the official online sponsors of the Black Stars. It's also brought to you by Big One Razor. One Razor is so unique. So many reasons to love it. With support from MVP, and am Francois Wani Tuyer, and Agape Ventures, your authentic replica Jesse warehouse. Noble Realty is your most reliable prop partner. A land at Dodoa today at a special discount. You just pay uh, you just pay four thousand Ghana cities instead of six thousand cities for a plot, or pay six thousand instead of ten thousand for a plot. Payment plans are available. Our properties have a hundred percent up to date legal documentation, and are litigation free. Site visit is on Saturdays at eight a.m. This special offer is valid from twenty sixth of January to twenty seventh of February, twenty fifteen. Locate our office two blocks behind CTFM at Abraka or call us on 0303-931-842-0264-8059 or 0260-844752. Noble Realty own a noble property today. Now we seem to be 
very worried about uh, Skipper so much and the fact that he's, he's so injured, he, cannot, he may not play in our game against the Equator Guineans on Thursday. But um, Coach Avram Grant, I'm sure, is the one who has a bigger headache because it's now his um, responsibility to find a replacement and ensure that uh, we actually do win with that replacement that he brings. So um, he's actually been speaking to our cameras. Let's hear what he has to say. We need to get a good referee who is a neutral referee who monitor and see to it that the boys, I mean, to go. Coach, what's the fitness level of Asamoah Chan at this point? Can you confidently say whether he's going to be available on Thursday or not? Uh, no, I'm not because we are not uh, checking him. We are doing all the medical uh, treatment that we need to do for him to make him ready for Thursday. But I must tell you, this issue of Asamoah Jan is not issue also of only of Asamoah Jan. What happened with this goalkeeper, what he did to Asamoah Jan, I think everybody, it's opportunity to the calf and everybody to show how they protect the players. When an injury, <coughs> when a goalkeeper, when it's 3-0, go deliberately, maybe to finish the career of Asamoah Jan, because if it was a few centimeters down, I can tell you that he, could, uh, he wouldn't play for many, many years, or many, many, a long, long time. I think the CAF uh, uh, need to take a decision. I think this player needs to be banned off the game for a long, long time, even years or something like this. First, it's a bad injury. Second, if you do it when it's 3-0 in the last minute, it means that you don't respect the, the game and you don't respect your friends that play against you. And I hope, I'm waiting to see what will be the punishment of, uh, of this goalkeeper. For me, I don't want to see him in the football pitch again. Blunt Avram Grant, he says that that goalkeeper Yatara, he doesn't want to see him in the tournament again. More or less, he should be banned or something. Right? Um, John Mensah Aydan says, Coach Avram Grant and his players should have confidence. They should be bold. Coach Avram Grant should start uh, Mahatma Otu and Kwesi Apia. Go Ghana, go Black Stars. What we Ghanaians need is the cap or trophy, not semi final. We have seen semi finals before. Soccer rocks, no size. Baba, you're too good. Thanks very much. Uh, I shouldn't have read that. But my, 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 my lips went faster than my, my mind. So, okay, thanks very much, um, John Mensa Aydan. And Dosa Ignacio says, Franca Champon should replace him. So, again, there's somebody who contradicts your opinion. He says that uh, Franca Champon should come in instead of Jordan Ayu. But um, let's take some camp updates for today, coming up on your screen shortly. The resignations continue. The next person on the list is uh, Algeria's captain Majid Bouguera. He has actually retired from international football. And he says that the game against the uh, Ivory Coast, the one Algeria lost 3-1, uh, was his final game for Algeria. So he's done and dusted. He debuted for Algeria in 2004. More resignations. Uh, Guinean coach Michel Dussouillet, he has actually become the second coaching casualty of the Nations Cup, announcing his departure following his team's loss to Ghana 3-0. That was on Sunday. Kwesia Pia, he says he wants to start. He wants to keep his place in the Black Stars starting 11. So let's see what Coach Evan Grant does now that it's certain that uh, Asamajan might not be available for selection on Thursday against Equatorial Guinea. <clears throat> The Guinean coach who has just resigned, uh, Michel Dissouye, he thinks that after Black Stars beating Guinea, the city nationals of Guinea, he thinks that Ghana will be the side to beat and Ghana could probably win the cup. Does that mean that he thought Guinea was the best side? Anyway, he says Ghana will win. And finally, let's talk officiating. Gabonese Eric Otogo Castan. Eric Otogo Castan, he is the one who will referee or officiate that game between Ghana and Equatorial Guinea uh, on Thursday at the Estadio Internacional de Malabo. He actually became a FIFA referee in 2011 and CAF elite referee since November 
of the same year. He'll be assisted by Abdelak Etiali uh, from Algeria. Hey, Algeria, anyway. And Justin Emiliano Dos Santos from Angola with Mehdi Abid Sharef from Algeria serving as the fourth referee. That's for Algeria, the way things have gone. Anyway, welcome back to Soccer Rocks. Uh, I'm still here with Nana. Nana, officiating. Eric Otogo Castani, Gabon, centre referee, Ghana versus Equatorial Guinea. Well, I think if, <clears throat> if we were to go by sentiment, we'd have said um, he being the referee means Ghana will get into the finals because How? Equatorial Guinea hey. walloped Gabon 2 0, denying them the chances of qualifying. But then he's going to be fair, all things being equal, and then he's going to put professionalism first. I think officiating hasn't been too bad in the tournament. It looks like people are, bro are blowing things out of proportion, especially with a Mauritanian referee who um, recently became the, 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 he became the, 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 the main victim because of the penalty award at Equatorial Guinea in their game against Tunisia. It hasn't entirely been too bad. It should be a bit average or pretty above average. So that you think that Eric... Otogo Castani will be fair to us. If a sentiment through him, then Ghana will win the match. But if he goes with professionalism... But don't you think you'll be under pressure to help Equatorial Guinea to help? And, and he might also be under pressure to do a favor to his countrymen, Gabon. So, yes, because Equatorial Guinea beat them 2-0. But was it wasn't his fault that Equatorial Guinea beat course, Gabon. Of course, but he's a Gabonese fan. You can't take that out. He's a, number, he's a Gabonese fan. So, the thing is, we, we shouldn't try to... Um, try to consider it from sentiment point of view. Let's just hope you'll be fair. If he's fair, that is good. If he isn't fair, then who? Many troubles. Okay, so earlier we hit the streets of Accra to find out from fans out there what they think about the officiating as we go into that semi-final encounter with Equatorial Guinea. Let's take a listen. We need to get a good referee who is a neutral referee who monitor and see to it that the boys, I mean, to going on in the field very well. The FA president have to, I mean, see to it that the referee that he, they do bring will be a neutral referee so that he wouldn't be biased to other opponents or other side of the, uh, of the team. Very well, so far so good. I can say officiating has not been bad at all, but it's just one or two incidents that has been come a controversial in the tournament, but I can tell you it's, so, it's good. What I'm expecting is that we should have a very good officiating because when you compare the last game, Victoria game play against Tunisia, uh, there is one penalty which has become a controversial in the tournament so far. But I think that, though for me it's a contact, but as if it is penalty or it's not a penalty, it's another issue altogether. But I can tell you, Ghana is going to give them a very, very good game. We are, we are also expecting to see a very good game from the Equatorial Guinea side, but I'm saying that the officiating, if you, the CAF has to look at it very, very critical for us to have a very good referee to be in the center of the game. Thank you very much. And God, I bet I can tell you, Ghana is going to win by three goals to two. We are expecting a great thing from the referee, not, 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 not be biased. It should be free and fair. And definitely I want to promise that Ghana is going to conquer the, 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 the whole show at the end of it. Well, I think officiating is, is, is quite good. It's interesting that um, some of the referees have records with um, red cards and all that, but uh, they've not done much of the red cards except uh, Matengana and then the Guinea match that I saw um, more of the cards going for um, them, especially their keeper and all that. For me, officiating is, is quite good, except that um, some of the penalties that were, they were given I'm on the hindsight of the referee. I mean, he took it. But, of course, these are some of the things that, of course, referees wouldn't see more of it. So, of course, you will still have um, errors like that. But, frankly speaking, uh, officiating has been good. I have been watching the matches so far. I think the boys are doing well. But um, if they are playing the host nation, I think they should take their chances. I don't know, but I still hope they'll come out with a win. I'm only praying the referee is not biased. But then, even if he is, I think they should take their chances and then still put up their best. We can give them about two goals. I think that will make all Ghanaians happy. Fantastic. No, I mean, Ghanaians shouldn't say officiating is not going to favor us because we are going to play the home team. Yeah? Ghanaian, I was in Angola with the Blasters when we played second to Egypt. You yeah, understand? Be, be, before Ghana got to the finals, we have to play against Angola, the host nation. It would be them 1-0. Asamuajan was the goal scorer. 
you understand they were the host nation so they officiating favor them rather we won you understand so i mean it's about the blasters they're going to play they pass in the uh, uh, semi-finals to the finals then winning the trophy that's the most important thing the boys should focus on playing and winning playing against the host nation i'm, I'm expecting the same officiating that is going on in in, in, um, um, in the tournament I'm expecting the same officiating that is going on in the tournament because the officiating that we are witnessing, it's fantastic. The Ghana got to meet uh, Equatoria Guinea, the host nation. Ghana will score them. By all the way, I wish Ghana would bring that, uh, the trophy. So I wish Ghana. Let's, we shouldn't talk about the referee. We should talk about the players. Because looking at how, uh, when you watch the game that Equatoria Guinea play uh, against Tunisia, they play against Tunisia. When you watch that game, you, got, you saw the penalty that they got. It wasn't a penalty. The referee should All right. So welcome back from the streets of Accra. Um, <clears throat> let me give you a little bit about uh, referee Eric Arnold Otogo Kastan from Referee. He has officiated two games so far in the 2015 AFCON. Uh, Tunisia won, Kivet won. He awarded a penalty there. I am sure you remember. Cameroon nil, Ivory Coast won. Uh, Kastan also refereed uh, the 2014 CAF Confederation CAF final first leg between Silway Sport and Al Ali. He took charge of the 2013 CAF Confederation CAF first leg between CS uh, Sfaxian and TP Mazimbi. Okay, so at least he, we know him a little bit, right? We, we, we know him a bit. But um, coming into the game, I do this to everyone who appears on the show. What must we do to win? Well, I think we should go into the game and not focus so much on officiating. We should go there with our own referee and try to kill the game within 90 minutes or if anything within 120 minutes and not rely so much on refereeing decisions that they should come in favor. They should come in our favor. Or if they aren't in our favor, then hey, we have cause for alarm. No, our boys should be mentally tough. They should know that we are playing against the host nation just like they did in 2010. To Angola, we should go all out. We shouldn't. We should be relentless, and we should be able to win the game. Okay, so um, Black Stars captain definitely he's missing that semi-final clash against uh, Equatorial okay. Guinea. That he goal. just has about five percent chances of making an appearance, which means that more or less he's not playing. Uh, and it will be very difficult also to have him play in the grand finale if we happen to qualify. But of course, we know Maria Kovacevic. The placenta woman is around. <laughs> and uh, just a bit of camp updates. DR Congo received a surprise presidential boost at the 2015 Nations Cup when President Joseph Kabila made a surprise visit to the Leopards camp in Malabo. Now, Kabila flew into Equatorial Guinea on Monday, just 44, 48 hours before DR, Congo's, uh, DR Congo faces Cote d'Ivoire in the semi-final in their semi-final uh, match, which will be the first game, uh, the first semi-final match um, for the 2015 Afcon, do you think the Black Stars need a presidential visit? Not necessarily. We have sent the, um, they have sent delegates and people of high mm. um, profile. So, hey, it should it, it should be good Is for enough them. Yeah. To boost them. Yeah, exactly. Do they need more money? No. No, not at all. Really? Fifteen thousand, <clears throat> thirty thousand. That's quite enough. If you really want the trophy, hey, that's enough. Of course, that's the only thing we need to forgive them. Anyway, so as we speak, the Inzalang National. That's the national team of Equatorial yeah. Guinea. They have landed at the Malabo airport and uh, currently ongoing is the press conference for the Black Stars. You need to stick and stay with us on this particular channel because we'll have updates from that press conference and also updates uh, on Asamojan and his injury situation, especially when the MRI scan uh, result is actually out. But for now, I can tell you for a fact that um, he's not playing in our semi-final against Equatorial Guinea, he has very, very, very little chances of making an appearance due to his thigh injury. They suspect a groin injury. But uh, hey, when you go down on your knees to pray, do you remember him? Nana Usu, thanks very much for coming. It's thanks very much to CheckyGhana.com. Thanks so much to um, Big One Razor. Thanks also to Agape Ventures. Thanks to Noble Realty Estate. Thanks to MVP. And thanks to you also for watching and to every one of you who sent me a message on Facebook. I'm sure I've read quite a lot of them. Tomorrow I'll continue if I didn't read yours. I'll read yours tomorrow, I promise. Until we cross carpets again, hasta la vista, adios.